Hi there. Um, my name is Dr. Tyler Amadon, and I'm the middle school principal at Denver Christian School. And I would like to share with you over the next uh, several minutes, um, about 20 minutes or so, a um, little bit about me. Um, a little, you'll get a little bit of an insight into my philosophy and how I approach uh, being the principal at, uh, at Denver Christian Middle School. Um, so hopefully, again, you get a little bit of a sense of me, a little bit of a sense of, of the middle school here, some different things that we do, some different things that I do. Um, so, uh, so here we go. Um, so a little bit about me. So I've been in education uh, almost 30 years um, at all different levels. I've um, <clears throat> been at the elementary school level, the middle school level. Um, I taught um, college. Uh, coached college baseball for six years. Um, I uh, co uh, taught um, high school baseball uh, at Denver Christian for a, for a very long time as well. Um, I have an amazing wife. Uh, her name is Nicole. Um, we are coming up on our 29th anniversary, so that's it's pretty awesome. Uh, and she is the director of special education for Douglas County School District, uh, just south of, of us here. Uh, and then I have two amazing kids. Uh, they're they're doing great. Uh, K twelve Denver Christian kids. Uh, as you can kind of see here, Jeffrey is a junior at Calvin University studying chemistry. Uh, he's an RA this year, which is kind of fun. Uh, he's he was also just recently asked to be on the uh, the university's presidential search committee um, as student representative. So we're proud of him for that. Um, here at DC. Uh, he played four sports, uh, super, super into athletics and um, all-state basketball, uh, coaches all-state basketball. Um, but he also was in the band for four years. That was his favorite, favorite thing during the day. Loved it. Um, but kind of sports and band have, have sort of faded for him. And now it's more of his leadership and what do I want to do. And um, again, he wants to uh, study chemistry and he some type of graduate program, um, but ultimately he wants to teach high school. And I think a lot of it has to do with his relationships here at Denver Christian. Um, Kara is my daughter. She's a sophomore at Trinity Christian College uh, in Chicago. Um, she played soccer here, volleyball here, won state championships in soccer and volleyball with her teammates here. Um, very passionate about art and super social justice mind. I mean, just really has a passion. Um, um, I can see her, uh, she's studying nursing, and I can see her taking the, those nursing skills and uh, that nursing degree and, and heading off to um, a really desperate part of, of the world, South America, um, somewhere in Africa. I can just really see that she has such a passion uh, for helping, just an amazing heart, um, and just uh, a real a real delight uh, to to be around. Um, you know, ultimately, my wife and I are we're we're flawed humans, so we need help. And so the partnership that my wife and I uh, had, we leaned heavily on with DC. I mean, it's just an immeasurable piece of 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 us. You know, being a parent is tough. And so we needed the mentors here to really lean into our children, um, whether it was about their faith or their social or just who they are as individuals. Uh, we really relied heavily on that. And so I bring that perspective to the middle school. Um, that partnership piece is huge. Um, and so I, we talk a lot about that with my team. And um, some of them are parents, some of them are not. Uh, but they still get it, no matter where they are in their in their um, uh, phase of life. Um, so we take that partnership very, very seriously, and we we just love the kids. We pour into the kids. Um, so there's kind of a sense of of who they are. Um, that upper left hand corner there, that's me getting hooded, and my sweet girl Kara, and then in the middle, of course, is my wife and. On the far right side is my son and his and his girlfriend. Um, they've been dating for quite some time now. And then, of course, the bottom left is 
One thing we love to do as a family is camp. And um, that's just on one of our camping trips this summer. Um, so the, really, really special. Uh, this past May, I completed my doctorate uh, of education. And um, that's me getting hooded. Uh, it was quite a special moment. Um, and it was fun to have my daughter there. My son was, was still at, out at school. So our theme this year is um, see the story, live the story. Uh, and the word that I've really focused on with the students so far is, is belonging um, and belonging to God. That's, that, that's the story. You belong in God's story. You want to be a part of living your story as part of God's story. And I, they have heard, oops, excuse me. They have heard me, um, they have heard me say that many, many times, um, belonging. And what are they doing to help others feel uh, a sense of belonging? Uh, what are they doing in their own faith journey to feel like they can more and more belong to God's story? Because God's there. He's reaching out. He's right there saying, you belong. You belong to me. My precious child, I created you uniquely. You belong to me. And so now it's up to us, students, staff, faculty, to reach back, right? So spent a lot of time with the students here on that. Um, one of the ways that we're going to do that is Teaching for Transformation. Um, so we've always done um, faith integration really well in our individual classrooms. And what this does is it provides a framework um, to really blend and strengthen that. So it's going to bring our service, it's going to bring our learning, um, it's going to bring our faith, uh, faith formation all together uh, into, um, into alignment. Into, and the consistency from grade level to grade level to grade level to grade level, I think will really be impactful for our students. and. I think the, the students will really sense that consistency. So, for example, in um, Mr. DeBoer's class, he's, he's got um, this phrase, it's C blank differently. And so he can put in whatever he wants in there. So he teaches sixth grade social studies. Um, see power differently. See myself differently. See the world differently. See blank differently. So those types of things... Um, so we're really excited to see what that's going to do uh, in Denver Christian and then more specifically in middle school. Um, you've got these through lines, um, and these are kind of phrases, these two-word phrases um, that we're going to be focusing on. Um, not all of them. I mean, that's a lot, right? But on a lot of them uh, in the middle school. But throughout a student's journey through Denver Christian, they're going to hit these. God worshiper, image reflector, community builder, um, you can kind of see those. I don't need to read them to you. Um, so anyway, we're really, really excited um, uh, about that. And if you want to pause the video and read them a little more closely, that's cool too. People always ask, you know, some secrets to, uh, I don't like to use the word survive in middle school, and it hurts my heart to think that way. Um, but to really thrive and flourish. Make good friend choices. Uh, do you have fun and laugh with this person? Can you be yourself? Number one, right? Can you be yourself? Or all of a sudden you have to morph uh, into somebody you're not and just to fit into that group. Um, if that's the case, I think you need to start asking some questions about that friendship group. Uh, is there trust and empathy? In other words, can I trust that person to be kind? Can I trust that person to allow me to be myself? Um, are they empathetic with maybe my story, my journey? Um, and then, of course, common interests are really good. But it, does, it doesn't have to be. I have great friends. You know, we, we have some common interests. We have enough where we are really great friends. But um, two of my greatest friends are super into motorcycles. I'm not. I, I don't know anything about motorcycles. They know everything about motorcycles. But we have enough in common where we can hang out and go to movies and um, go out for dinner. And, you know, so it doesn't, it, you don't have to, like, be hand in glove. 
but some common interests are really, really important. But I think those top uh, three are, are a little more important than that. Um, a consistent time in the word and prayer is really, really important. How are we going to strengthen our, our faith journey? Um, it's through prayer. It's through reading the Bible. Um, it's re the stories are fascinating, right? I mean, when you read a story in the Bible, you're, I mean, it's like an amazing mystery or it's an amazing adventure. I mean, they're just incredible stories. Um, and it gives, and the, it's the word that's inspired by God. So what cannot be amazing about that? And then, of course, time in prayer. That personal faith formation, development, connection with God is really, really important. Cannot stress that enough. So as we move from kind of a faith formation piece, we move into kind of the learning piece. Um, this is really the time when the students need to start taking uh, responsibility for their own learning. Like they just need to own it. Um, so in other words, instead of the, the adult figure, the guardian, the mom, dad, emailing the teacher, have your child email the teacher. I have a question about the trip or I have a question about my grade. That needs to be the student. You can help them form that. So like with my own kids, we would, we didn't, we didn't do any, any of that emailing for our, my kiddos, but um, we'd sit down and help them frame the email. So we'd look at it and say, yeah, that's good. Or maybe, maybe soften that or change that word or something like that. So you can help them and kind of scaffold and, and walk around them with that, but don't do it for them. They need to experience the challenges of that and having to reply. And that's part of taking responsibility for their own learning. That's how they're, they're going to learn. If we do it for them all the time, they're not going to learn. They're not going to learn. Um, and they need to fall and skin their knee. And if they don't get a great grade um, on a particular assignment, okay. They, they need to figure out that they can survive that. Or what are they going to do differently? Or maybe I shouldn't have played so many video games the night before the test or the two nights or three nights before the test. And I just kind of sat around and did nothing. Okay, well, there's consequences for that. So I'll, maybe I had to change that. Um, so there's just some things over there. Um, they can monitor their own grades. Everything is right in front of them in Canvas. Um, it's right there. Uh, and if they have questions about it, then go ask the teacher. Um, they go ask the teacher. Um, you know, if you've got some kiddos that are kind of perfectionists about this whole thing, they need to know that they can survive a B. One of the greatest things was um, my son got his first B, I think it was his sophomore year, freshman, sophomore year in high school, and he woke up the next day and realized he could survive that. Yeah, pretty good. Here we go. Let's just move on. And um, same with my daughter at some point. Skinned her knee and um, academically. And okay, here we go. Who cares? Now you, now you survived. Get up and try it again. So I just I cannot um, uh, stress that part enough. But part of that scaffolding piece um, is kind of a systems piece. Uh, we have systems here. For example, we gave every single one of our sixth graders a planner. Um, you need some type of plan. Um, my son, I, I shared this with the families um, at our uh, convocation back to school day, um, that second day of school. And my son has used the same app I Studies Pro. Um, I get asked about that app all the time. It's a, it's got an, it's a logo of an apple. Um, he's used, the, so he's a junior in college. He's used the same app since fifth grade. Works great for him. My daughter, she uses a like a comp book, just a lined paper, and she stays organized like that. They both work well for them. That's what system works well for them. We need to figure out what works well for your child. Um, and you kind of have to be flexible and is this system working? No, not really. I cannot tell you how many times um, a student is struggling and I'll ask, where do they do their homework? Well, they, you know, they're up in the room on their own. I think that's asking too much of some students. 
that might work for some. It does not work. It doesn't work for everybody. So you need to kind of think about that. Um, for us, we said no technology at all in the bedrooms, no phones, no computers in the, until your junior year of high school. That's just that works for us. You have a different system. I'm not telling you what to do, but I know that um, studying and um, having them some accountability at the kitchen table and the dining room table where we could see them and check in with them and help them kind of get them redirected was really, really good. And it worked for us. And I would suggest that. Uh, the other thing that we have in our kitchen, it's still there, um, is a dry erase board. It's small. It's not um, too much smaller or too much bigger than this one. Um, and we'd put things on there. Game Tuesday, we kind of put the weekly there or uh, Jeffrey Test Friday. You know, they wrote it. They wrote it, not us. But it just kind of kept some accountability there, and, and that worked pretty good. But like my that bottom bullet point says, ownership is the key. They own the learning. They own the system. Um, so part of owning your, your, your learning is uh, learning to self-advocate. That's the email I was referring to earlier. Hey, I got a... I got this grade on my English on my English paper or on my science test or in PE or in music. Can you help me understand that grade a little bit? That's not let let the student do that. Let the student do that. They can communicate. Um, they're in the building. They can walk to the teacher's classroom at lunch. They can walk to the teacher's classroom before school. All that good stuff. Um, but they need to do that. Um, that's part of, that's a great skill that they'll need for the rest of their lives. Um, again, it's best if it's done in person, but sometimes the first thing can be an email. Hey, Mrs. So-and-so, Mr. So-and-so, Miss So-and-so, uh, do you have time tomorrow at break for a quick chat about my pick a subject grade? And so you kind of set the table for an in-person meeting. So anyway, totally recommend that. Um, throughout this whole thing, one of the biggest challenges for our students is um, regulating their emotions. Um, they, their emotions are like right here. They're like a cell deep. Um, I mean, right below the surface of, of the skin there. They could laugh or cry literally at any moment. And uh, they're brains and bodies are, are going bananas and doing backflips. Uh, so uh, recess is an awesome way to kind of help that. We're, we're out there. I'm, we're, I'm out there quite a bit. The teachers are out there, of course, every day. So there's two or three teachers out there every single day. But we're not out there with referee stripes on, um, helping them figure out their 25 versus 25 soccer game. We're just not. that they, they need to kind of figure that out. We'll help them. We'll scaffold that. But we don't have a whistle and a referee stripes on. That's for sure. Um, so, again, one of the things that we have to do is be patient as they learn these skills. Um, they're going to say mean things and do mean things. They just are. I, we do too, right? Um, but because they're sort of at that constant fork in the road of their emotions way up and way down. There's not a lot of this. It's it's either peaks and valleys and they live there. Those are that's really hard. It's exhausting. It's tiring. Um, it's frustrating for them, right? Because they're like, what is going on here? Um, it can make friendships really hard because they'll quick say something they wish they wouldn't have said, boom, there goes a friendship for at least a couple of days. Um, and so we can really help that. But again, recess is one of the most brilliant times to, to, uh, uh, to work on that. It's just, it's just great. And so that's why we have a, actually a pretty long recess at lunch. Um, I talk to most of my middle school colleagues around the country. Theirs aren't that long. Um, but I just believe in the power of recess and the power of getting the energy out and working on that stuff. I just believe in that. <coughs> Excuse me. One of the things in dealing with emotions is um, one of the ways that we've addressed this very specifically is hiring a full-time uh, counselor. 
Mrs. Cater, she is amazing. Um, she is such a gift to us. Um, she doesn't do discipline. That's me. <clears throat> um, she invests in the social emotional well-being of our students every single day. She visits classrooms. She meets with the students one-on-one -on -one as needed. She, right now, early on in the year, she's connecting with all the new students just to kind of see how are you doing? How are you connecting? Do you need any help connecting? Um, but she is an absolute gift to us, and we are very, very thankful. Um, and, you know, let's be honest, the, the social-emotional well-being right now of, of teens, of adolescents, um, it, it's a crisis right now. I mean, it just is. And, and they're, they're, this, the, the data will prove that. Um, the data will prove that um, easily. And so we're going to take this head on and we're going we're gonna to figure out how to best help these kids. Um, we don't do it perfectly. We don't. I, I make mistakes all the time. Um, but first and foremost, uh, we lean. Uh, we start by loving the kids. I mean, that's, that's the foundational piece. And we want relationships to be strong um, so that then we can help them with their social emotional um, uh, well-being. <clears throat> How do we work on our social emotional well-being? Um, attend church. Uh, often it's a great way to meet other youth. Um, so connecting uh, again with that social emotional well-being, connecting with your um, youth group. Uh, my kids went to youth group at a different church. Um, we spent many, many, many years at um, a church down by our house, but my kids went to a different youth group and um, and gathered um, there uh, on Sunday nights, uh, and that was that was such an incredible piece to their social emotional development. Uh, again, another adult pouring into them. It's not their teacher, not their coach, not me, um, not my wife, but a different adult adult leader. Um, and so, having the opportunity to attend church, a faith formation, b social emotional well being. Um, I, could, I could go on and on with, with all the benefits of, of church. Another way that we pour into the social emotional well-being is when we, we see leadership opportunities or leadership skills. We're like, hmm, there's some that we can foster in that kid, in that student. Uh, it's called the SALT program, um, uh, SALT uh, Student Ambassador Leadership Training. They host our shadow students. Uh, this year, they were at our new student orientation, and they led the tours. They were amazing. They were so great. I just I emailed them, you know, a couple weeks before that first day, and they all jumped in, and, man, they were just awesome. Um, so proud of them. Uh, so we're developing that, and, again, that runs through um, Mrs. Cater's office, our, our school counselor. Explorers, uh, we're kind of in a, tradition, in a transition right now. Uh, we've got electives going on in sixth grade. We've got a different type of schedule for seventh and eighth grade. So we're um, we're we're kind of tweaking the Explorer program, uh, moving into electives for the whole middle school next year. So this year is kind of a tweener, and uh, and so we're trying to offer some after school clubs to make up for the Explorers. So I have a fencing um, after school club that's firing up. We're going to have coding. That's going to fire up computer science, a STEAM uh, club that are all going to be firing up. Um, but nonetheless, uh, this we're kind of at a, in a tweener stage right now um, uh, for our Explorers program. Specials for 7th and 8th grade, a couple of shifts there. Um, again, another way we're always looking to get better. Um, in the past, and we've grown a lot, so that's sort of forced us to think about what systems we need to scale, or what systems are scaling well, and maybe what systems are not. We've always had, say, Spanish we had twice a week, art we had once a week, PE twice a week. And we're like, mm. So for example, in art, there were certain projects that we couldn't do because it was once a week. Or if there was a snow day on the day you were supposed to have art, you'd go two weeks without art. And we're like, oh, man, 
there's a there's something missing there. So we made it where um, seventh and eighth grade they have a certain so they have music all year. So they're in a band, they're in a choir, they're in general music. There's some overlap. Some band students are also doing choir. Um, anyway, so we what we did is we shifted to where now there's a section of seventh graders that have art every single day for this first term. Second term, they might have PE every single day. Third term, they might have Spanish every single day. So there's some consistency in their schedule. There's some consistency in their learning. And so far, talking to the, talking to the students these first couple weeks, they love it. They love it. They go here. It's so consistent. It's it's just been great. So I'm really I'm really proud of that. I'm really excited about that. Um, it brings into art projects that they can work on, um, clay or whatever the stuff that you need to be there every single day in order to pull off. So just so excited about that. Um, our trips. Um, we do trips. Uh, each grade does a trip. In fact. Um, Depends on when you're watching this. Uh, this is, I'm making this video at the end of August. Um, so our uh, sixth graders are about to head out to Estes Park, uh, Rocky Mountain. Our seventh graders are about to head out to Camp Idrahaji, which is up near Bailey. And then in a couple weeks, middle of September, our eighth graders, uh, you can see them in the upper right-hand corner there, <clears throat> are going to the Black Hills. And um, Idra Camp Idrahaji is very adventure. You can see the high ropes course on the left picture. That's Idrahaji rappel, um, archery, um, climbing wall, um, 800 foot zip line, just an amazing. And the focus there is trust, trust in the Lord, trust your gear, trust your classmate, trust your, your staff member. Um, Estes Park is, is hiking and um, just beautiful nights of devotion in the evenings it's just it's awesome and then mount rushmore there you see is one of the places they go so there's some touristy sides there's some real faith development sides where we stay is this beautiful camp uh it's kind of in this valley it's got a river through it it's just stunning and it really makes you feel close to god just amazing and then there's a service piece we work with an organization called love inc Love, Inc. is in the name of Christ, I-N-C. And that really serves a needy population up in the Black Hills area. Um, you can, you can kind of look that up. It's, it's just a really, really, it was a great trip. Wrapping up here, so communication. Um, there's the weekly news that comes out every Sunday. You'll see a middle school link. You'll get regular emails from me and the athletic director. There's different social media pieces. Uh, for Denver Christian. Uh, most of our stuff hangs out in Canvas. That's the learning management system. Your students have full access to that. You as a, as a parent can be an observer, it's called. So you can kind of see what they see. You can set up different types of notifications on that. Um, it's, it's a really neat learning management system. We're in our second year of Canvas. So teachers as well as students are still kind of getting used to all the tools that are um, available uh, in Canvas, um, but overall it's been a real positive experience and, and better this year uh, than the past. So um, anyway, everything is in there. There's some nice apps. If you want to search in your app store, um, there's some nice Canvas apps. There's a parent app and there's, of course, a student app, um, but a uh, great tool. Uh, communication, if you've got an ortho appointment or you're going to be late or you're not feeling well, uh, that's the communication there. Uh, use that. Don't don't necessarily communicate from me. I don't I don't always get to my emails right away in the morning, so it's important that you put attendance. And then it's not a bad idea to put your teachers or your teachers your students homeroom teacher uh, on that email as well. Um, you can see communication there. Uh, the teachers have uh, voicemail only. Uh, so if you go in the parent student handbook, uh, the family student handbook, you'll see um, all the extensions are in there. Uh, it's kind of at the first few pages. So if you're looking for your um, 
teacher's phone um, phone number. Look it up in the handbook. Uh, emailing is great. Um, it's fine. Uh, keep in mind, you're not the only one emailing us. <laughs> so we will get to you as soon as we can. Uh, we do have that 24-hour rule, however. Um, I, I, I pretty much don't allow my teachers to respond to emails over the weekend uh, or in the evening. Um, Mr. DeBoer needs to be Matt and Dad at night, not Mr. DeBoer. Um, he needs to be able to check out, right? Mrs. Naylor needs to be Beth. Um, not Mrs. Naylor at 8 o'clock at night. Um, Mrs. McCraith needs to be Kelly and a, and a wife, um, not Mrs. McCraith um, at home. So you kind of get my point there. So you can email in the evening. That's fine. Um, please just don't, um, don't expect uh, a reply that evening. Uh, it'll, it'll come the next day. Uh, and the same is with me. I need to go home and just be Tyler and go for walks with my wife. Now that I'm an empty nester, we just go for walks a lot and, um, and take our dog out and, and stuff like that. Talk to my kids sometimes, but um, I will, we will get back to you. We just, it's just probably not going to be in the evening uh, uh, nor the weekend. Uh, more communication. If you're frustrated about something, please email and set up a time to connect. Um, really long emails. We get things get lost in translation. Um, so if you want to say, "Hey, some my, my my son or my daughters, tell me about some stuff happening at school. Do you have a time to chat?" Um, let us know right away because we will jump in um, and handle it the best we can. Um, and plus, we have most of the story here, right? We're we're in it. We've got the 200 plus middle school students here. We have a fuller picture of kind of what's going on so um start with the homeroom teacher don't come straight to me start with the homeroom teacher start there see how it goes um oftentimes way more times than not they know way 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 more of the story than i do uh, 99 times out of 100 because they're there they're in the classroom they're they're in the situation so start there with the classroom teacher and and then progress there but again don't it's not an email that's like this. It's just, hey, you know, this, there's a couple things happening here. Can, can we chat? So, anyway. Carline, um, y'all are figuring out Carline pretty good. Um, yesterday was really fast. The big game changer is middle school sports is starting. So that's about 60 students right there that are not in Carline. So that's pretty, that's pretty awesome. That, so we were 10 minutes faster just yesterday by removing uh, those students. Um, but again, you're, you're coming in through the pond, you come underneath, dropping off, then heading out the main exit. I always suggest you turn right on Teller, but um, that is up to you. And then we always get the question, you know, how can we get involved? There's a lot of ways you can get involved. Um, sports, band concerts, come to them. Even if your son or daughter doesn't play band, play in the band, come and watch. Even if they are in the band and don't play sports, come and watch. It's a great community time, super fun. Um, we have uh, parent association, that's a big deal. Uh, Booster club, of course. Um, we do have background checks and those are good for three years and things like that. So um, there's a lot of ways to engage in the community and we strongly encourage that. So thank you. Uh, hopefully you have uh, a little bit of a better sense of, of, of me, of the middle school, of kind of our approach to teaching and learning. Uh, there's my contact information uh, there if you need it. But uh, thanks. I appreciate your time. Um, and if you have any questions or want to connect or whatever, let me know. Um, and my final word is I'm always up for a cup of coffee. And so you can email me and say, hey, can we meet for a cup of coffee? I do have a really, really, really busy schedule, but I will make time to figure out how you and I can sit down for a cup of coffee first thing in the morning before my day gets going um, and uh, chat. Yeah, so I, I love that. So please, please, please uh, don't hesitate to, uh, to reach out and, and do that. So um, anyway, thanks. Um, thanks for checking in. And again, look forward to seeing you down the road. Bye.